Hello fabulous air signs, Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. We are going to do a tarot reading for each of you. Check the timestamps below so that you can hop to your own. Before we get started, please come into this reading with an open heart and an open mind, a desire to learn something and better yourself. If the messages that come through don't resonate for you, that's totally fine. Feel free to push them aside. Um, only take what serves you. You may want to revisit some of the messages in the future. You are accountable and responsible for all your own actions and decisions. This is, of course, optional advice, guidance, and energy check-in. Let's set the intention to get you some clear, helpful, insightful messages. All right, we're going to start with Gemini. Again, timestamps are below. All right, Tara, what do we want to tell Geminis in the coming month or so? What are some messages that Gemini needs to hear? Gemini. Ooh, a new start. You have uh, the Fool's Journey, the Fool to the Magician, the very first two cards in tarot, so cards zero to one. So I see that as progress. <laughs> Let's see. Possibly in terms of some sort of personal project, it could be a more kind of spiritual endeavor with the Hermit coming through. Um, for those who are single and looking, there could be something maybe with a Virgo that, that's coming through or possibly an Aquarius. Let's see. And it, I, so I'm sort of getting this message is that you, you keep running from the truth or self-sabotaging in that this is a relationship that's going to require um, you to really truly change and transform uh, as a person, but I don't mean that in the negative sense of changing to be someone that you're not. It's quite the opposite. It's like there's a relationship trying to come into you, whether it's romantic or not. It could be a friendship. It could be a mentorship, whatever it is, right? Um, there's a relationship that's trying to come in that's sort of going to align you to the highest vibration of, of who you can be. Um, and maybe that's a little bit kind of heady. I feel like there's a better way to phrase it, but it brings out the best version of you, the best qualities, the best habits. Um, it sort of promotes a healthier lifestyle. Um, and so with that, because it is bringing kind of this vibration of change, if you will, there's a part of my, my Geminis out there who are not necessarily wanting to admit or acknowledge that because it might be easier to run from this and fall back into old patterns of beliefs, of behaviors, of, you know, fill in the blank. When in reality, the universe, I think, wants you to go towards something that really is going to shake up your life and change up your life, especially with these two cards, but in a good way with the Virgo card kind of, or the Hermit card rather at the center of your spread, you know, it's, it's a peaceful um, kind of, it's a hard working sign, but it, it's a card that kind of denotes peace and spirituality and seeking inner wisdom. Um, but sometimes that inner wisdom is initiated or brought into you from an external source. Um, and then you kind of have to do your own soul searching to see if and where it fits into your life. I hope that's making sense. This, is, this feels kind of like a heavy message, even though it's actually a really light, beautiful one. But and the only reason I kind of went into that kind of version of it is the seven of swords. It's like, don't slip back into old behaviors or old uh, addictions, old patterns that they don't really serve you, right? It's like, Sometimes it's hard to, uh, to hold yourself accountable, to be the changed version of who you want to be. And yeah, again, like that, it feels very Gemini. It feels very Mercury to me. It's like that, that the easiness of being able to slip back into the way things used to be because it's familiar, but then the next day seeking change. It's kind of like keeping one foot in, one foot out, if that makes sense. But I think the universe is really asking you to embrace the new and, and make those heavy, necessary, difficult, but ultimately rewarding changes. Some of you may have been dealing with a Scorpio who wasn't necessarily forward or honest with you, or or if, if not that, it's like they kept a lot of secrets and kept you guessing. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean they were malicious. I mean, quite frankly, Scorpio is a secret keeper, right? And that doesn't have to mean, the, you know, cheating and this and that, but yeah, it's... Gemini and Scorpio can be a challenging relationship, very karmic, absolutely. Um, but yeah, it can be a relationship where this person kind of keeps you guessing because they either they keep you at arm's length or they keep you at arm's distance. Or um, again, it's just like that desire to know them and learn them and, and find out what's going on in their head. It's a little bit harder to penetrate. It's a little bit harder to get at that. And so it could have been the impatience on your end or again, just kind of this lack of... of what you were both desiring in a relationship. The, I, I get the idea that this person was very happy just sitting in a room in silence and reading. And, you know, you wanted to talk and you wanted to watch Netflix and you, you know, fill in the blank. It's like your your love language, so to say, was just very different. So um, anything I can tell them specifically about the Scorpio for the Gemini's dealing with one? <clears throat> 
<laughs> yeah, more, again, it's super slow. It's not developing at the rate or the speed that you had wished. I feel like <clears throat> one or both people here may be dealing with health, health issues, speci specifically mental health, and so they understand that they need to preserve their energy and um, be very selective of who they're hanging out with and who they're sharing their time with. And this is no shade to you, Gemini, but you might not be that person that they're like, yeah, come hang out with me all the time. Because, and again, I don't mean to insult you. This is just how I'm seeing it. They find your energy a little bit hyper or draining or like a lot. So it's not that they don't enjoy the friendship, but it's like it's better in small doses for them at the current moment. I know that's a really harsh message to hear. I say it with love and compassion. But ultimately, if hearing that kind of triggers you, that might be a sign that, a, a learning opportunity, or B, maybe this just isn't your person. Maybe you don't have to change at all if you like who you are and this and that. And I hope you do like who you are, right? Um, but yeah, there's something about that where it's it's foggy, it's confusing, it's not all there. And I think you spend a lot of time thinking about this person and contemplating what could have been. But is that ultimately a good use of your time? I think you have to change the perspective here. I think really the, the message with the Scorpio is that <clears throat> rejection is divine protection. At least in this current reading, again, I'm reading for like roughly a month. I don't see things with the Scorpio panning out. I do like the Virgo energy. I think something about that sets you free. It makes you feel lighthearted. It gives you butterflies in your tummy. <clears throat> King of Wands. Okay, so maybe fire sign energy too. But going off of what we were saying with the Virgo, there could be a lot of passionate chemistry. There could be a very exciting, dynamic relationship where you guys do a lot of, uh, you know, fun activities together, a very active lifestyle with the King of Wands, someone who's maybe very creative, someone who has good leadership skills, someone who's incredibly generous, um, and, and maybe good, hot, passionate sex, right, with the King of Wands, so... Which is interesting because Gemini and Virgo, you're both ruled by Mercury, but you know, th there's it's a very different kind of um, influence of Mercury. So we'll we'll see. But I, I do like that. I like that so far. And then maybe something with a fire sign. Let's see. So I feel like there was a fire sign who decided that they would be better off alone. I am sort of getting the idea that maybe they rejected you, Gemini. Um, but they're second guessing it. It's almost like. Again, I, I'm sort of getting this energy of feeling very suffocated. And so, again, no shade to my Geminis. Love my Geminis. I have very strong Gemini in my chart, as you can tell, right? The way I talk. It's fast. It's speedy. It's quick, right? Um, uh, I just lost... <laughs> there, there goes my Gemini. I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> no, no. I feel like there was a fire sign who ultimately said, hey, let's just be friends, but now they're regretting it. I think at the time they felt suffocated or maybe like you were too codependent or requiring a lot more of their time and attention that they were capable of giving you. But it's almost like not having you in their life now, they're starting to realize like just how much joy and happiness you brought them. So again, it's a similar message for this person too. In order to embrace this, this person, this lifestyle, this relationship, it does require that person to sort of change or alter how they're going to operate now that they're in sort of a, a tag team dynamic, now that they're in a relationship. It isn't just the single independent, I don't really have to worry about anyone else but me. They have to be more considerate of other people, right? Um, very strong Leo energy. I do think you will hear from a Leo of the past, whether they broke up with you or not. I do think a Leo from your past is coming back around. I think this person might be a little bit proud. They may have a little bit of ego, maybe a tiny bit of cockiness. Um, and, and, and so I'm not really sure what to do with that. Uh, can I pull one more card on this? Because I don't know if this is like a, did you learn your lesson from that person who didn't treat you well? Or is, is this worth breathing new life into to see? What, in terms of judgment, just one more card. Yeah, so I don't think there there's huge changed behavior. Um, I actually, I think, again, there's this loss, this feeling of sadness that you're not in their life. I think they feel guilty that they rejected you, if that's the case. I think there's a little bit of depression. I think they miss you. That probably goes both ways, though. You might be feeling that way too, Gemini. But are they reaching out? This is not a great card of action. I think this is a little bit of like drowning in our sorrows, crying over spilled milk. It's like, okay, we can cry over it, but ultimately, what are we going to do about it? Are we going to clean it up? Are we going to fix it? Are we going to buy more milk? Like, do you know, and, and I'm saying that obviously is a metaphor, but it's like, okay, so we've acknowledged that we're sad, but how are we going to use that energy in a positive way to kind of, you know, move things forward, right? By all means, you know, mourn the loss of something, you know, 
it's important to grieve properly, but when we get stuck in that energy, ultimately it's not doing anyone any favors. So if this is your person thinking about you and longing for you and missing you, in the next month are they going to reach out? Eh, if they do, I think it's like, um, what is that expression there? Um, they're not they're not coming with their best energy. I, I almost see this more of, of looking you up online, seeing what you're up to, who you're dating, what your status is, but I don't necessarily think they're reaching out. I definitely think they're thinking about it. Um, yeah, okay, and there's your Leo card. So Leo is going to come through in some capacity. Uh, if you're single and looking, Leo energy is probably going to be good, but I will say they may not reach out immediately because they may still be grieving from an ex that they're getting over. But um, Leo energy is definitely coming through for you in the next, I'll say, like, month and a half. Um, a, a fire sign who is an ex may come back around, but, but I, I don't know. I get this stagnant energy of even if they come back around, they're not coming correct. If that makes sense, there still is kind of like this wishy-washy. I don't know how I'm going to make it work with Gemini, but I miss them. And it's like, well, they either love you or they don't, right? It's not that complicated, right? But then, but it is complicated in that they need to make some adjustments in order to make this relationship work. So again, where's the effort? If they're not willing to put in the time and the effort and the energy and have those important discussions, like really, where's the sword energy here, right? If they're not willing to be vulnerable and open up and have the discussions with you about what they need and what they want in a relationship and what they're capable of, then, you know, it's going to be left floundering, right? So choose wisely, Gemini. All right, we're going to move on to Libra after a little shuffle of my deck here. All right, Libra, what's up? Let's see what the tarot wants to tell you in the coming month or so. Love relationships. Ooh, maybe another Libra coming in. Ooh, or a, a long-term connection with an Aquarius. Strong major arcana for sure. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's just talk about this, you guys. You have two very strong cards of marriage and contract. Um, so if you choose to review this from a lens other than romantic, you could be signing a long-term business contract that is definitely kind of in alignment with your long-term hopes, dreams, goals, wishes. There could be some sort of... Um, it doesn't have to be creative, but I almost wanted to say creative collaboration, maybe because of the wand. Some sort of collaboration with a friend that you maybe go into business with, some sort of uh, counterpart or colleague or something like that. I say that because, you know, Aquarius is very connected to the idea of groups and friendships. Um, being more involved in your community. Um, and possibly with the star in the sky, having a more, uh, more time in the spotlight, uh, much more face time, being seen a little bit more, um, and possibly... A lot of times this could have to do with a stronger presence on social media, on the interwebs. Maybe you're, you're working on your website, etc. Um, so yeah, great business cards in terms of a long-term contract that, that you've been kind of wishing and hoping for and manifesting for a while. Um, some of you may also be learning about astrology, if that's of interest to you. In terms of romantic relationships, again, Libra, Aquarius, and then the Four of Wands, it's like a milestone in a relationship. Uh, and it's very positive. It typically does represent marriages, but if you're not there, if that's not what you're looking for, it just represents like really a good uh, progress, good growth. Uh, you know, any four is about a solid foundation. So it's something from which you can grow upon if, if you choose and, and desire to do so. Um, but yeah, love this for you. Who's marrying an Aquarius? <laughs> Anybody? Anybody out there? Oh, Wheel of Fortune, Libra, crushing it. And then we got some fives. All right, let's talk about that. All right, so some of you definitely have travel in your future. There may be a, a conflict with a water sign in your life, a Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces. I, I think this is a minor thing in the grand scheme of it, but I think there's a little bit of fiery, saucy energy, maybe a competitive energy, somebody who says something kind of... Uh, backhanded, maybe as a joke, but you take it kind of personally. But either way, I think both people after after the, the incident, if you will, they both kind of look back and regret how they acted and what they said. Um, so if, if this resonates for you in terms of a family member, a sibling, you know, something like that, um, it could also have to do with maybe a co-worker that maybe you are working on some sort of team project or, I don't know, I'm almost getting kind of like a little bit of office drama, like, you know, two teams, almost like put in competition. I don't know why I'm getting that, but anyway. Um, and, and it could become like a little bit cutthroat and then, but leave it to the Libra to step in and be like, okay, let's talk this through, guys. Like, let's rebalance the scales. Let's let's bring some equilibrium to this. Like, you know, we're a team. We're not, we're, you know, we're not competing against each other. We're supposed to be helping and supporting each other. Like, you very much step into that role, whether you like it or not. Sorry, I just have to say it. I think you come in as the pacifist who maybe helps to fix the situation. But I will say, uh, you know, whoever, 
has done the damage and, and I am getting sort of uh, harsh words, intense words, um, you know, words that cut deep, that kind of thing. They are in the wrong for sure. Like, so they definitely have some apologizing to do. Now the King of Cups can be a little bit fixed, right? So I'm not sure if they're going to open up that, um, uh, open up, I don't know how you want to say it, open, open themselves up to offer up that apology or admit that they feel guilt or shame or whatever it is they said. But ultimately, I think things will be made right, but it may take some time because this person, I'm going to say, like, with this King of Cups, with what's surrounded by him, he's not, he or she, whoever this is, is not the most, like, emotionally intelligent person. They probably have trouble admitting when they're wrong or admitting when they're at fault and, and owning that and, you know, again, apologizing. So there could be a little bit of pig-headedness, but ultimately I do think this person likes you and appreciates you. And so, yeah, it like, it will work itself out, but you may have to be a little bit patient. That being said though, do not be a, um, a people pleaser or a, uh, a doormat. That, that's a really good way of saying it. You do need to own your truth and, and stick to your guns and say what you need to say because ultimately like this behavior can't go unchecked or else it's sort of um, enabling, right? So yeah, you, you do need to call this person out, but knowing you, Libra, you're going to do it in a kind, gener you know, gentle, tactful way. But you do need to know that this person or let this person know that they crossed the line so that, you know, change behavior, you can fix the situation or, or you know, edit, uh, you know, whatever it is. If, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm like circling around different words here, but it needs to be fixed, needs to be addressed. Um, for those who are dating a water sign, Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces, there's a lot of drama right now with them. I think they're still stuck in the past, shocker, um, but they're stuck in the past on someone who really hurt them and broke their heart. And so that may account for them being a little bit cold or defensive or shut off. It's because they're not operating from, from this in terms of like, in a conscious way, but it's like they're guarded because they don't want to get hurt again. Um, it, it's almost like they look at themselves as having fought a lot of battles in terms of love and romance. It feels like they always get their heart stomped on or their heart broken. And so even if they do like you and you like them back, you may have trouble getting them to open up a little bit. I think the universe is like, don't worry about it. Let it happen organically. If this person is, is going to show up for you, um, they will. But again, going into the mentality of, oh, I can fix them. I can change them. I can make this right. You don't want to do that, right? That's making more problems for yourself. And ultimately, it's not your job to do that. It's part of this person's spiritual journey to, to learn to open, open themselves up and to trust and love again. And so you may be an instigator of that just simply by being present in their life. But it doesn't mean you're, you're being asked to like roll up your sleeves and do the emotional work for this person. You know that. I'm just reminding you of that. Um, yeah, I would say it's... it. Uh, look at it as an option that may pan out in the future, but I wouldn't invest too much time or energy in that currently. I would put yourself out there and spark fun connections, flirtation with other people. You know, if you're single and looking and this is kind of one that you're maybe putting up on a pedestal, but it's like you just can't get through to this person, leave that where it is and, you know, leave the door open for them to come into your life if and when they're ready to. But again, they, I think you've already kind of made the first move, so now it's like the ball's in their court. In the meantime, though... Busy yourself with other things. Focus on things you love, things you things you like to do, things you're passionate about. Um, I feel like you may have a dream about a fire sign, but it's almost like the child version of them. Like I'm, I don't. This is really clunky to me. I'm not totally making sense of it. But it's like you have a dream about your fire sign, maybe Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. But it's like them as a child. So I don't know if this is someone in your family or like a romantic prospect, or it's like. Or it's like you meet them on the playground in your childhood, but like you know this person as an adult because you work with them or so. I don't know. There's there's something there about like, and like they they reach out and they want to be friends with you in the dream or or there's some sort of yeah there's some sort of like intuitive thing that very much I, I don't know what to do with this guys. It has to do with some sort of like image of them as a child. Um, and maybe it's understanding, you know, maybe it's with your current partner instead of getting all flustered and, and you know, heated about some um, argument because they're acting kind of pig headed. It, maybe it's like if you choose to view them as like emotionally immature, you may be able to work through the problem easier, understanding that it's almost like a, a handicap or like a disability because they never got that love as a child. I don't know. That's that's one version of this. Um, others of you, there could be just um, uh, some some strong flirtation, um, online dating, chatting online, texting, whatever it is. And there's potential for it to grow into something. Um, 
I, yeah, I don't know what to do with that whole thing with the dream, but if it's meant for you, that, that message will find you if it's supposed to. I, but I don't get don't get hung up on it if that's confusing, because you're right, it is. It's like a weird, confusing message, but dreams don't always make sense. So it's like I'm, I'm trying to draw meaning from something that may just be more symbolic. Anyway, um, I also think this kind of makes up a combination of like a one-night stand, the Page of Wands and the Four of Swords, maybe with an Earth sign. Um, I feel like you guys jump into bed immediately, so what can I say to that? Magician, mm, they were very, very uh, persuasive. Or that might be you, Libra, too. That could be for the cross watchers jumping into bed with a Libra. <laughs> yeah, it, it's weird, though. It, it's like hot and cold. It's like the magic and the passion was there, and then it seems like it, it, um, it there's like a cog, uh, what is that expression? There's like a cog in the wheel, or no, there's a, a some, it's like it's not moving forward as, as much as you thought it would. Like it starts off hot and heavy and passionate and it's moving forward and then it's like it gets stuck in a rut or, or something like that. There's a little bit of blocking and so I don't know if that's this person not responding to you after this or vice versa, or if it's just the idea that, that the universe has obstacles that are getting in the way of this coming together again. I'm, I'm getting more of that. It, um, yeah, okay, so like an unexpected obstacle will become about, especially with an earth sign, double down on the Virgo, you have a lot of Virgo cards here, where it's like, it, see, it seemed like the perfect night, it seemed like a fairy tale, and then all of a sudden it's like they're called away for, for work, or some, someone in their family is sick and they're having to go attend to their needs. And like, yeah, like this, this one, it feels a little bit stuck to me. Um, so I think it will move forward, but again, there, there's, you have several messages of like release. You need to be patient. You need to let things like operate the way they're supposed to in the timeline they're supposed to. You can't fix it or change it or rush it. You just have to be present and open to it. But ultimately, don't put all your eggs in one basket. I think if you are putting other people and other people's lives before you, you're not doing it right. So make sure you're living your life for you. Again, we said you do things that are fun, that you're passionate about, that you enjoy, whether you're with people or not. And there's definitely opportunities for romance. I mean, there's definitely opportunity for like marriage and long term commitment. But in terms of like dating, like the dating scene right now it's it's like hit and miss it's like you have some good connections but then there's like a little bit of a lull or you have another good connection but then it's put on pause um this will be a fabulous opportunity for you guys to travel um a fabulous opportunity for you to um embark on some sort of new academic or, or learning uh, course adventure something you're you're interested in learning about that would be a good use of your time and energy if you're not doing like the dating thing and then look your your nine of cups comes along so wish fulfillment um so what you're wishing and hoping for you have a lot of cards saying it's it's in the works it's being manifested but it's not necessarily arriving to you fully fleshed out you know in the month of of december so hang in there do the work you know slow and steady wins the race is what i would say all right libra that was the beginning of that reading was absolutely fabulous so i hope some of that resonates for you um, you may also be traveling with a sagittarius or a sagittarius may enter your life um, in in the coming weeks all right, we're going to move on to Aquarius. What's up, Aquarius? Let's see what the tarot wants to tell you for the coming month or so. Love, dating, romance, or anything else that wants to come through for Aquarius. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, new love with a cancer. <laughs> um, or possibly during your travels, whether that's, you know, local travel or long distance travel, there might be some sort of uh, new romantic connection. At bare minimum, some sort of like warm uh, friendship that that's, is sparked or, or developed. Um, yeah, very likely travel though with, <laughs> with the Eight of Wands or during travel. King of Cups. All right, so water sign energy. Wow, Sagittarius. So some of you are kind of waiting or deliberating on energy with a Sagittarius. Um, some of you, it feels like some of you are connecting with someone where there's a lot of romantic passion and energy and it kind of stirs up that, those like butterflies and those sort of like, oh my gosh, I'm, I have such a big crush on them, that kind of energy. But some of you may feel like you're not totally ready to be fully present in this relationship because you are still on, on the mend or healing from something that has already happened in your life. Uh, now, that could be something medical. That could be more heartbreak from a, a challenging romantic situation, possibly Sagittarius or, or Pisces in terms of healing from something. But it doesn't have to be that. That's just an option. Um, or it could go vice versa. You may connect with someone and you really like them and you're all in, especially with the Eight of Wands. It's like things happen very fast and very quickly, like falling in love hard and quick and fast. But the more you get to know them, you may realize that they still have some healing to do on their journey. And so you don't want to be a substitute for um, them kind of, 
Yeah, fully healing from something. It's like you're, and I don't think this is the case. I actually think you're practicing really good emotional intelligence and boundaries, but it's like you want to make sure that you're not with someone who's just rebounding or is afraid to be alone. And so they're connecting with you because, you know, you're just the next person in line. I don't think that's the case, but it's very likely that that's happened to you in the past and you're not looking to be like, quote unquote, burned by that type of energy again. Um, and yeah, so I do think your water sign, if that is the case, is very like dreamy, hopeless, romantic. I think they're into you. I think the, I think the feelings are mutual and the strong connection and passion and chemistry is mutual, but one person has a little bit of a, I don't want to call it a hang up, but they also have some personal work to do in their life in terms of something or someone that needs some time and attention to heal and fully kind of, um, be in a better situation, essentially. Now, that doesn't mean you can't date this person while you're healing or vice versa, but just do keep that in mind that this shouldn't be a distraction from some very important soul work that that one or both of you still need to do in, in the background. And, and, you know, maybe you can do it together. Maybe this person is being int uh, introduced to you almost as like a, a soulmate partnership where there there's more room and breathe, a, uh, room to, uh, sorry, I, I'm dancing around a word. There's more room to like breathe and, and connect and have sort of a more like meditative healing type energy versus someone who maybe was very opposed to, you know, more spiritual stuff and, in a past relationship. It seems like there's a little bit more open-mindedness in this relationship, a little more give and take and allowing you the space and time you need to, to focus on you as well. Um, another, and I, I'm not, I don't mean to swing negative because I actually really like the storyline. Even these are, are good cards in, in, in some ways. Um, Neptune can be just very dreamy, hopeless, romantic energy. And so I think there could be a challenge here, especially with these two cards, these three cards, is that you may connect with someone who lives at a distance. And so it might not be as easy as just getting in the car and driving 20 minutes up the road to go see this person. There could be some sort of connection where it's like, all right, we, we have to plan, we have to strategize, like, when are you free and when can you come visit me and this and that. Um, but it, it's interesting. It seems to take off very quickly. It's like from the two of cups, it's like, oh my gosh, like I'm ready to marry this person. And I don't know if that freaks you out or that excites you, but yeah, there, there's a very strong connection that moves very swiftly, very, very fast. All right, so there's that 10 of, oh my gosh. All right, so let's talk about this. <laughs> then all the cards come out. All right, so this all looks good to me, but then we have this. So this is definitely presenting as a little bit more trickier energy. So here's what I think. Um, I think this is a relationship that comes to you at a time that isn't necessarily convenient. It's almost like you weren't even necessarily looking for it, and yet here it is and it's happening. Um, it, it, you know, the expression is like, life happens when you least expect it. I think for one or both of you, you may have just gotten out of a relationship or a commitment or even been laid off from work. Like there could be some sort of uh, challenge that you're still sort of learning to embrace or adjust to sort of some new lifestyle. Because ultimately with the Ten of Swords, information was presented that sort of went against what you were hoping for or thinking. And so it may be a slight blow to your ego, but ultimately it's a lesson. It's like, okay, well now I know this and I can pick up the pieces and I'm going to move forward, but I'm a changed person because I now know this or I've gone through this. It's not always a bad card, right? It looks so severe, but ultimately it's like there could be some defeat, some disappointment, some exhaustion against some some healing right and there could have been like medical stuff getting in the way anyway love comes in at a time where you're still kind of feeling this a little bit but like it comes out of the clear blue it's very shocking it's very unexpected and it sort of wakes you up to you know what like I can't put my life on pause all the time um, in in sort of paying too much time and attention to to grieving and neglecting like living life fully so yes you need to do the grieving work you need to do the soul work you need to do the healing we've said that um but this may be a relationship that sort of uh, jolts you out of this rut or this depression and sort of makes you see that there there are more possibilities out in the world and maybe something about this person the way they're living or what they're doing you find very inspiring um, in a way that maybe you want to, I don't want to say mimic, but create some sort of lifestyle similar to what this person is doing or vice versa. Um, and so with that, I say it comes at a time where it's not necessarily convenient because you may find yourself having to be packing a suitcase every time you want to go see this person, or you may have to purchase a plane ticket or um, something of the sort. Maybe it's not a plane ticket, but maybe, you know, you have to take a ferry ride to see them or, you know, something about it. It's like, 
it just kind of happened. And so I think for a lot of you, if you don't mind me saying, it would be silly not to pursue this a little bit because I think there is something very strong about this connection. But with that, it's also reminding you that you now you have a new realization about your limitations and capabilities, um, and especially in terms of what your body can tolerate health wise. And so with this, this is a gift from the universe, this connection, this relationship, but it is, all, it is also encouraging you and more or less forcing you to practice healthy boundaries and more self-respect in terms of not over giving of yourself or making promises that you can't follow through with or unrealistic expectations. I think for both of you, there needs to be open and honest communication or else that's gonna bite you in the butt. Um, but honestly, like I see this as kind of a cool reading. Um, yeah, a lot of travel, a lot of traveling. And maybe that's just something you guys have in common. If this person doesn't live at a distance, I guess I'm asking you to help me do the work here. What are all these travel cards have to do with? Do they travel for a living? Are they constantly going on business trips? Are they, you know, do they meet you? And then they're like, oh, by the way, I'm planning on moving to France next year. Like, do you, like there's some sort of like potentially obstacles with travel or there could be pleasure and, jo and enjoyment um, to take, you know, trips with this person. Um, and maybe they're Sagittarius too. You have a lot of cards of Sagittarius and a lot of, I'm getting really strong water sign energy, Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces, and, and, and really strong Sagittarius. Could be another fire sign though, you know, Leo, Aries, whatever. The sign isn't as important, but those qualities are sort of what shines through. So, um, <laughs> I don't say this lightly because I don't think it is for the majority of you, but I do also get the message that you may meet somebody as they're moving homes or moving away. And at, even after they've left the state, left the town, left the country, or if they move to, you keep in touch, especially by text. You may even go to visit them just as a friendship. And there might be this kind of, we have to address the elephant in the room here that like we met at, at a terrible time because now we're in love and we live in, you know, opposite coasts or whatever. And so you guys may end up moving in together relatively quickly um, in, in order to like bridge that gap. And I, again, I don't really have a position on this. I would say, you know, think things through, honor and respect yourself. You know, what you've learned in the past year is going to serve you in this relationship. So practice boundaries, you know, logical thinking. But ultimately, like, I, I'm, I'm not foolish enough to tell you what to do because that's not really what I'm here to do, right? But especially with that Aquarian energy, you guys are gonna do what you wanna do. Um, I, I do think there's value in pursuing this and, and seeing what's up with this person. I think this could be a very healing, soulful connection. Um, but yeah, there, there may be a very fast and swift move in order to, to make this relationship work and, and be closer uh, physically, emotionally, and, and kind of bridge the gap of, of uh, you know, the distance between you. That's, that's what I see. But I think it could be very fun. I think it could be very playful. I think both of you have an adventurous spirit. I think both of you have a lot of goals and dreams and wishes that like you're, you're yearning to, to go towards and... Um, and achieve. And I think you guys would be like a good support system for each other, a good cheerleader, a good coach. You know, it's like you're rooting for your person. You're not rooting against them. And it feels like in past relationships, you've had people who you thought were on your team that ultimately it's like they were a little bit jealous of you or they were a little bit selfish. Or, you know, when, when you were celebrating your wins, they took it internally as like their own defeat or, or like almost like a competitive nature, but like an unhealthy competitive nature. So we don't want that in our life. I think you know that you've learned that. Um, but yeah, accept good energy and, and almost honestly, this almost feels like sort of a uh, soulmate connection, but almost like an angel or angel guides, or it's like this person is sent to you at the right time, even though you may think like, this is terrible timing. Like I have so much going on right now. Maybe it's a nice little break or a nice little reprieve from all the, the stress and chaos and drama that you may also be dealing with. But again, it's not like you have to resign yourself to only doing this part of your life. You should seek out avenues of, of fun and romance and passion and all that. All right, Aquarius, that's what I got for you. Please remember to like, share, subscribe, and I will see you very soon for more tarot. Bye, guys.